Everybody ain't been telling the truth. And now listen to me. So many people make excuses for their poverty today, holding on to the era that Jesus was poor. And that day they didn't have a middle class. And they either you were poor or you were well off. And they had to conclude that Jesus being a carpenter and Jesus, you know, being connected with Joseph and where he lived then and all this stuff, they had to conclude there was no way he could have been poor. What's good to that? The fact of the matter is, some people been lying on Jesus. And he finna come back. You ain't gonna be able to lie to him when he's looking at you. John chapter 1, 35 and 39 tells us Jesus had a house. Well, that doesn't say what you just said. The troubling part of our culture, which is largely anti-gay. Being gay is a gift from God. What's good to say? Sunday school, they taught me about the Sabbath day. And there was a great debate going on at that time as to what day was the real day to worship God. That debate continues to this day and has existed all the way back uh, to the Old Testament, Old Testament theology as to what is the right day uh, to worship God. In spite of the fact that the New Testament tells us not to give respect of days, we're still debating over what day we ought to worship. Well, that doesn't say what you just said. That on the first day of the week, uh, they came together in the book of Acts, and she did that to make me understand that she said that the New Testament Sabbath was Sunday, and that it was the New Testament Sabbath because it was a new beginning, and that Christ rose from the dead on the third day, and from the New Testament forward, uh, we should worship on Sunday. What's good to say? So I think science has never been stronger. Uh, and half the people roughly uh, question evolution and think that some other theory, creationism, is just as likely. And it's very frightening because I think a society that turns its back on reason and prefers ideology is headed towards some kind of theocracy. you too old to be believing in evolution. Evolution say people came from monkeys. And the question is, why is there still monkeys? Is these the retarded monkeys? They didn't turn into people just yet. Well, you cannot confuse the facts. The Bible says, first shall be last. Well, I don't know. We have been the first at last for a long time. I don't think you're ever going to be able to beat us at that. Hey, go, go for it, man. Just let it go because this is, this is, this is it. I'm telling you. Okay. Well, I would like to say... Um, uh, that before before we went to the commercial, I, I, I was speaking of the fact that Christ says, "Many shall come in His name and say, I am Christ,' and shall deceive many." Well, Christ was giving us a warning, or He was actually letting us know where the greatest deceptions would come from, and that's Christianity. Now. Not to say that you had that there's not good people in the church. Of course there's good people in the church. But what you go to church for, or that inspired spirit that comes to you, that Holy Spirit that guides you to try to find out about the most high, traps you, entraps you. You get entrapped in some of these religions and lose and we lose our way. Like the example I can give you is that. Christ says in Matthew 5 and 17, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. That one jot or one tittle shall not shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Now, Christ says he didn't come to break any laws or to destroy the law. But in our churches, we are taught to ignore the law. So if the law is done away with and there's no law to follow, how, what will the Most High judge us by? See, that was one of the tools that was used to destroy and demoralize the world. If you move the line, sooner or later there is no line. And it leads to gay marriage and everything else you see that's going on in America. The law was our line. It gave, it gave us the clear defined do's and don'ts. Now, of course, the sacrificial part and the part about killing people wasn't right because it didn't give us a chance to repent. So that was nailed to the cross. 
But all in all, this world is going to hell in a handbasket, uh, no pun intended, because the line has been moved, and that's the law. Here's an example. One, uh, you would speak to a Christian and say, well, listen, brother or sister, you said that we should at least keep the Ten, right? The Ten Commandments. They would say, well, yes. But then they ignore the Sabbath day and say that Christ rose on a Sunday. And the Bible even tells you that when Mary went, Mary and uh, when the two Marys went to the stone, the stone was already moved on the first day of the week. So Christ didn't change the Sabbath day. The pagans deceived us in the fourth century under Constantine. It was a compromise to use Christ's name for pagan worships on Sundays. Pagans was worshiping on Sundays while Christ was walking the earth. So Christmas, December 25th, most people don't know that that's Nimrod's birthday. And it's also the celebration for the Greeks and Roman celebration of, of Jupiter. Most people don't know that Easter is Ceramus' mother, Estar, or Astor, which was a Babylonian goddess that was later adopted under the Romans and Greeks, and now we celebrate Easter. So when, when God said, when Christ says, think not that I've come to destroy the law, and then in Daniel 7 and 25 it tells us that, that this king would rise, they would think to change times and laws, and we know that happened with the Roman King Constantine. The whole Christian faction now of the Satanic Roman Church is now have now switched the Lord's Sabbath to Sunday, to the first day of the week. Now, how can we say we know God if we keep not his commandments? Let me read this real quick out of uh, 1 John, the fifth chapter. Now, I'm not here to judge anyone. If, listen, people can praise the Most High any day you want to praise the Most High. Let's not get that, those wires crossed there. But we cannot forget the Sabbath. This is, this is in the Ten Commandments. Let me read uh, 1 John, the fifth chapter here. All right. And it says 1 John 5 and 3. And I'm going to bring this around to what I was saying about Israel today. 1 John 5 and 3 says, and this is the New Testament, brothers and sisters. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So you notice right before it went into our faith, it told us to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Now, usually if we speak about sin, Satan has put a twist in our society where if you correct someone, it's judging them. No. A wise man loves reproof. We're not here to judge anyone. Listen, we all fall short of the glory of God. But should we just move the bar out of the way? Should we make it where there is no law at all and then expect to be accepted by our Lord and Savior? That's not fair. That's not right. 1 John 2 and 4 in the same Bible. New Testament, follow me. He that saith, I know of him and keepeth not his commandment is a liar and the truth is not in him so anyone say that God's law is done away with you're not telling the truth brothers and sisters because if there's no law by what will, by what uh, uh, parameter will we will we be judged as a people so what happened getting back to the conquest and the what you would call the Roman conquest, the continual Roman conquest, when the, when the so-called founding fathers found, uh, founded America, they were Masons and Luciferians. A lot of you don't know this. Now, 
they did do a great piece of work. The Constitution, beyond any shadow of a doubt, is a great piece of work. But I'll tell you this, there's no greater piece of work than the laws contained in the Bible. Okay? Because the Lord God do not give a man freedom to worship anything they want to worship. He's a jealous God. So if these were God-fearing men, the first thing they would have did, they would have done, is to make sure God, God's law would be upholded within that country. You don't open the floodgate for, for all religions to come into one bubble unless there's an orchestrated effort towards people you want to confuse. Listen to me clearly. That was purpose opening the floodgates. If you are a Christian nation, like for instance, I can't go in, into the Middle East and say all religions come. No, they don't work like that. Because Christ tell us a nation divided against itself cannot stand. So whoever founded America and allowed freedom of religion knew that that would eventually divide the nation. That's where we are now, brothers and sisters. Let, let me jump in real quick and ask you a question. And I, I'd just yeah. like to hear, hear your take on this. When Jesus said any kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Absolutely. Um, he, I also go to Daniel 2.43. And he, in Daniel 2.43, it says the last kingdom of the world will be a mixed, uh, the, the toes, the miry clay mixed with iron. And quote, they shall mingle themselves together with the seed of men. Who is they, in your opinion? Uh, they are the Adunian Roman powers, and they have mingled themselves with the seeds of benevolence. So, when they say they will mingle themselves with the seed of men, you mean fallen angels, correct? Um, no, Romans. You think Romans will mingle themselves with the seed of men? Why would there exactly. be... I'm going to show you because when you go into the precepts, that links directly to the fourth beast. 